I want to talk to you about um, routing wood that's thicker than like an inch. Um, a lot of bits are only going to be an inch or an inch and a quarter or even an inch and a half. So I think these are both, these are both an inch. So I'm currently working on this um, garden bench from Rockler. You can buy it from their website, but you'll notice how thick these arms and legs are and they're um, about two and three quarters inches thick. And I think it's gonna be very, very difficult to get a, um, a router bit that's like three inches or whatever to, to route this. So I'm gonna teach you a trick to do it. So I wanna be respectful of your time and I'm gonna basically explain what we're gonna do. And then you can click off if you don't wanna stay. So we have the bearing on the bottom here. This is going to be on the bottom and the wood's gonna be up top. And we're basically gonna follow this along and cut our piece. All right, we're gonna go along and cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it. And then basically where our wood is cut, we're gonna follow. And where our piece is cut, we're gonna run that along. That, you know, the piece that's cut is gonna be up here. And then the uncut parts down here. And then we're gonna run this along the already cut half of the piece and shave off the bottom. You want to plane it evenly on both sides so the middle, the seam, is almost perfectly in the middle. So whatever I do on one side, I'm going to flip it and plane it that same amount on the other side and keep flipping it back and forth until I, I'm done and I reach my targeted thickness. And the targeted thickness and what this is is two and three quarters. Um, obviously I'm going to clean this up. You see some marks from the router but this is actually two pieces, separate pieces, piece one, piece two, of um, two different pieces of board. And I machine them and then I join, join them together. And just to show you how tight, so here you can more clearly see the two pieces of wood and it's a pretty tight fit. It glued up well and it machined well. This is the board before we plane it. So right now it's about three and a quarter inches and we want to go down to two and three quarters. So we're going to be taking off half an inch, which is actually quite a bit. So we're going to have about a five gallon bucket full of shavings. So if I go like this on this side, at least, I can almost avoid totally this knot and this knot. I find the rule with the double-sided tape is use like twice as much as you think you need. Um, because once you get to the router table and it's gonna move on the router table, it probably won't move on the uh, bandsaw, but it'll move on the router table. And man, when that template moves, and you cut into it and you, you don't, you can't just readjust the template. Like you've already taken off too much material material and you're going to be too thin. You're not going to be wide enough. It really sucks. Cause you might just like have to throw out that piece of at work and start over again. So in a lot of things, it, it, it pays not to be cheap. Um, and just being like careful and um, doing things a little bit overly done, it can save you money and time. Other people are going to trace the template onto the uh, wood and then they're gonna go to the bandsaw and cut it out. But I'm actually going to do it another way where I'm going to have the template on at the bandsaw and I'm going to stay further away from it than most people are. And then I'll just clean it up with the, uh, the router so I'm like right on the template where I need to be. And so I'm realizing I taped the wrong side because I believe the term is chiral, like in chemistry, like with your hands. So it's different. Um, so there is like a right side and a wrong side to tape this stuff if you're trying to do a certain cut out of the, the wood. So it doesn't have to be perfect. 
with the bandsaw. Uh, and especially if you're gonna leave the template on like I do, you wanna be careful. I mean, this is kind of like roughly what I would aim for. Um, this is probably like way too much. Like up here, obviously that's a lot, but um, I just wanna make sure I don't nick the template because then I would have to remake it. So this one might be like an inch and a half or maybe a little taller. It's hard to get bits that are taller than that. You have to be careful with the knots because they can like crack, splinter, and they can get dangerous. Like the router could jump. Um, so one of the issues that happened while I was doing this, well, you notice I was working that that last part a long time. That's what happens when you leave too much material on, you got to route. But there was another issue where I rocked a little bit and I took a chunk out of the template and I took a chunk out of the work piece. I don't know if it, people even debate this or if it's just an accepted fact, but I don't think you want knots. And um, I avoided them as much as I can, but this, this is literally called at the lumber mill, knotty pine, it's, and they, they abbreviated it K pine. So um, we'll see how the final product looks. Um, but that's, you don't want the knots. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like kind of a lip, there's like a lip here. And that's what happens when the router is too high. Um, this is like coming between the, and that's dangerous too. Um, when there's like wood between the bearing and the, the cutting head, cause it can get stuck in there and the piece can jerk and it can jerk your hand. So that, that's kind of dangerous too. That's the first part. You're running the bearing along here, cutting uh, this part. The next part, we're gonna flip it. And what we're gonna do is run this one. Bearing's gonna go along the finished part and it's gonna cut all this unfinished stuff. So this is my template of the garden bench. And this is my part. It's the leg and then this forms part of the top portion. All right, thanks for making it to the end of the video. And to summarize basically today, um, you don't have to necessarily own a router bit that's like three inches tall or two inches tall to like route these, these large thick pieces of wood. What you can do is, you know, you can do it with two routers and basically one router would have to have a bearing on the bottom and one router would have to have a bearing on the top.